Hi friends, my name is Bhavya Mangla. I am IATF qualified doctor doing audit for the automotive sector for the last 18 years. I am again back with a very very interesting topic. What is the key difference between severity, occurrence and detection with respect to FMEA manual first edition as per AIG and BDA. So before going further, it's very important to understand what exactly is FMEA. So if you see in our day to day life, we are actually doing some sort of a risk analysis. So for example, during the COVID days, we always assess that what is the risk of getting the COVID and to avoid that what we need to do, maybe wearing mask or maybe using sanitizer, maybe not going outside and all those things. So in a way, day in day out, we are doing FMEA knowingly and unknowingly. But in this particular video, I'm going to talk specifically with respect to the automotive sector. And in this video, I'm going to talk about what is FMEA, what is failure change, what are the key difference between severity, occurrence and detection, what are the present challenges that industry is facing with respect to it and overall summary about it. So let's start first with understanding what exactly is a failure chain. So when we talk about failure chain, basically we are talking about failure mode failure effect and failure causes and if you look at the picture you will find that failure mode is in the center because the impact of failure mode is going to failure cause as well as failure effect as per definition when we talk about failure mode we mean to say that the ways and modes by which something can go wrong or some failure can happen when we talk about failure effect fe we are talking about the consequences of those failure modes and when we talk about failure causes, we are talking about an indication that why that failure code could occur. And while doing that, it's very important to understand that whenever we are talking about failure, failure can be based on four different customers. The first and the most important is the end user. The second one is the OEM who is actually fitting up everything or it can be tier one and tier two. The third one is actually the organization who is actually doing that particular FMEA, who is making that particular product. And the fourth is the legal bodies, the regulatory bodies, who are making some guidelines that uh, what should be done and what should not be done with respect to the safety of the people or with respect to the other things. So these are the four key customers which we must consider while doing the FMEA. So let's talk first about the severity part. So when we talk about severity in easy language, when we are talking about it say somebody is standing on a second floor and if that person falls down then what is the severity that whether that person is going to survive or not that is called severity or in case there is an earthquake what is the possibility what is the severity what is the impact of that if the earthquake is of say magnitude of 12 or in case tsunami comes what will be the severity what can be its impact so that's what exactly we are talking about severity. If we talk about with respect to the vehicle, then you are applying a brake and the brake does not work. What is the severity? What is the impact that you are running at a speed of 100 kilometers per hour and then brake is not working? What is the severity of that? So this exactly is what severity is about. So in way, we when talk about with respect to a definition. So basically it is a measure associated with the most serious failure effect that can happen. When we generally talk about severity, it has no linkage with what is the occurrence and what is the detection, irrespective of whether that thing is going to happen or not. We don't need to consider that while considering the severity rating. And generally, severity rating can be different from team to team, even for the same product, depending on the composition of the team, the kind of experience they are having, based on that they can decide. One very important thing is that whenever we are talking about severity, we must link it with the customer or the supplier, the end user is very, very important when we are considering that. And the fourth important thing is that, say for example, a team is doing a FMEA, especially you can say process FMEA. So that team may not be aware in detail about what exactly is going to happen to the end user end. So at that time, they can always take the help of the customer or maybe the person who made the DFMA because they may know that what can be the severity for that particular failure mode. Now to talk about the severity table, so in IATF, in uh, FME manual, there are two different tables which are given. One is for design FME and second is for process FME. So let's first start with the design FME. So if you look into the table, the rating is given from very high to very low. So very high is 10 and very low is 1. So in DFME severity table, when you are talking about 
10 ranking so it is talking about the safe operation again I can give the same example that you are driving a car and when you apply a brake and it's not working or maybe you're driving a car and there's an accident and airbag does not open so that is related to 10th ranking then the ninth one is related to regulations that there are certain guidelines which are set by the government and you're not meeting that so for example there is a regulation with respect to the emission and it is not being met so that can be considered with respect to the severity ranking of 9. Similarly, if you go to 8, 7 and 6, it's talking about loss of primary function, degradation of the primary function and other things. And in all the cases, when we are talking about severity, we need to consider the end user. That is most important. Now, coming to the severity table with respect to the process FME. So, when we talk about process FME, if you see that table, they have divided the table into three different parts. The first one is end user. The second one is maybe the OEMs, maybe tier 1 and tier 2 and the third one is the organization or the person who are actually doing that particular activity. And then we need to see that what is the severity at different level. And one basic thumb rule is that we need to consider the highest severity if it is happening at end user end or maybe the organization end or maybe that the OEMs end. So when we are talking about 10, here again it is talking about the safety. When we talk about 9, it is talking about the regulatory compliance and similarly 8, 9 and 7, it is talking about the, the delay or the reduction in the performance of that particular product or that particular process. Now coming to the occurrence. Now when we are talking about severity, you know that some examples given about that if somebody is falling from the top. Now here we are talking about the causes. We are not talking when we talk about occurrence. That say for example, if you are producing 1000 pieces and there are 100 pieces are getting rejected, so it is 10%. So we can say that uh, the occurrence rating will be very high or low. No. The intent is that we need to talk about the failure causes of those 100 rejections and not those 100 numbers. So there is a possibility that there are 5 different causes for those 100 pieces which are getting rejected. And when we look deep into the data, we may realize that there can be one particular cause which may have resulted in 80 rejections and remaining four causes are contributing to the 20 number of rejection. So based on that, then we need to take some preventive or some other controls that we need to take. So when we talk about occurrence, we don't need to think about what is the severity ranking. Severity ranking can be very high, but based on the occurrences, we can decide that what rating we need to give with respect to that. And primarily it is talking about the effectiveness of the preventive controls that we are already having in the organization. Some of the possible questions a CFT team when they are working on the FMEA, they can ask you know, with each other. First, the question is that whether the preventive control is in place. The second could be that is it a new product or a new process or it is similar to which is there earlier also. What exactly is the application of this particular product or the process? If there is any environmental change in which that is to be produced or that will be working on it or it still remains the same. What exactly is the field return or the kind of rejections that have come internally and externally with respect to that? Whether there is any standard work instruction, job setup instructions, process monitoring and all those things are available at the moment or not? And whether there is any foolproofing techniques, any solutions are already there or not? So based on that, we can decide about the occurrence rating. Just like severity ranking, in occurrence rating also it ranges from 10 to 1. The possibility of occurrence is very high and one is very low. And there are two different tables, one is for design and other is for process. So when we talk about design, FMEA, so the first, that, that number 10, the highest ranking is talking about that we are talking about a new technology which has not been used anywhere. So for example, we can talk about the EV. In many countries, it's a very new technology which has not been used. So what can be the possibility of occurrence of that particular failure? So it, it is with respect to that. When we talk about 9, so 9 we are talking about some technical innovation is there within that new company. So what is the possibility of that failure that, that can happen? And similarly, the ranking goes down to 1 from 10 to 1. And now when we talk about the process of FMEA, so in process of FMEA, the ranking again goes from 10 to 9. The 10 is that there is no preventive control. 
the nine is that preventive control is there but it can have a little impact or little effect it is with respect to that the failure is there but somewhat it is affected and similarly it goes down to one now coming to detection now again when we talk about detection it has a link with that what is the possibility that whatever failure causes are there or whatever failure modes are there whether we can detect them or not so again we are talking about this that we are driving a car and while driving a car how we can detect that whether the engine is getting heated or not so if you see generally on the dashboard there is a signal that gives us the message that yes some problem is going to happen so that we can take some action similarly there is also a signal that if you are not putting a seat belt there is a buzzer coming or some light is peeping up so that gives us a detection that yes at the moment the driver or the person is sitting next to the driver that person is not wearing a seat belt so these are different ways of detection mechanism are there so when we are monitoring the detection first very important thing is some question that we can ask is that what is the effective detection control mechanism that we are there at the moment with us one important thing is to understand that just like severity and occurrence rating this is also a relative rating and is no linkage with severity and occurrence and basically it's a prediction of the effectiveness of the controls that organization has put there so one of the possible questions that the cft can ask while giving the rating for the detection that which test is most effective in detecting the failure cause of the mode whether the sample size is required to detect the mechanism is right or wrong and whether there is a proven test procedure with respect to the failure modes and causes identification just like severity and occurrence here also the rating goes from 10 to 0 1 but the only difference is that here we are talking when the possibility of identifying or detecting something is very very low it is 10 and when it's very high it's 1 and again it has got two different tables for design fme and process fme so when we talk about design fme the first is that there is no test procedure which is developed so that is given a ranking of 10 but when we say 9 it is talking about the test method is design but it's not very good in detecting something and similarly the rating goes down to 1 when we talk about process fme and the detection rating when we talk about 10 it's talking about that yes the present failure mechanism the present uh, the method of detection will not be able to detect any failure and when we give it a rating of 9 it's talking about it is not very easy to detect and there is a possibility that failure can move further but when we go to 8 7 and further so 8 is talking about the human intervention generally we have 100% inspection 200% inspection so it's talking about that kind of inspection and 7 is about machine based detection so here we are talking about the detection like some sort of a buzzer is there some defect is there so it, there will be an indication that yes a problem is there and then we can come to an take some action and similarly that rating goes down to 1 so once we give a rating with respect to severity occurrence and detection the next thing is what to do about that so if you see the fourth version of fma they used to have rpn number risk priority number but in this first edition they are talking about action priority ap and they have given three different ranking high medium and low and based on that further action needs to be taken that what needs to be done if the ranking is high and generally a thumb rule is there if the severity is very high say 9 and 10 we have to take a recommended action but then apart from that there is a combination of occurrence also that maybe the severity is low but the occurrence is very high so in that case we also need to take action and then in that case the action priority it will be high and not medium and low so that brings to the last thing that what are the present challenges that industry is facing with respect to severity occurrence and detection so the first and the most important thing is that the cross functional team which is working are they competent enough to understand the and you know they know the differences in the meaning of the ranking with respect to severity occurrence and detection and secondly whatever rating is coming is it the actual rating that is coming or already their preconceived notion that rating should not go more than that because if it is more then they need to take a more detailed action something like that and thirdly 
whatever recommended actions that are coming is it actually coming out based on the rating for severity occurrence and detection or again as per our convenience we decide that this should be the possible recommended action and then we feel satisfied about that so we need to think about that so if i do a summary with respect to uh, severity occurrence and detection so when we talk about severity basically we are talking about the failure effect what exactly is the severity of the failure effect when we are talking about occurrence we are talking about the possibility of occurrence of the failure cause we are not talking about the numbers but the causes that what are the causes of the failure that is about the occurrence rating and when we talk about detection we are talking about that whether we can detect that failure cause or that failure mode. So if I do a summary, I talked about what is FMEA, what is failure change, what is the key difference between severity, occurrence and detection, what are the key industry challenges that we are facing at the moment. My next video will again be in the same series of FMEA and that will be talking about the key difference between preventive control and detection controls. Regularly, I'm getting a lot of feedback from your side and they're helping me to understand your requirements. So please do continue that. And in case you want to understand about this particular video in more detail, if you, there is a link below, if you click that, you'll find a blog there. And there you can find this particular information in much more detail. And in case you're liking these kind of videos and blogs, you can share it with your friends and you can subscribe to my YouTube channel and my website, bhavyamangla.com. Thank you.